What's up, y'all? This is Jake, and I wanted to show you real quick how to set up multi-output routing in your Logic Pro 10 sampler instrument. So most of the time when I'm working with drum samples in Logic Pro, I'll tend to use the built-in sampler instrument in order to manage and organize all my drum sounds. I've been using it for years and I really just like the workflow and how easy it is to create and manage drum kits for all my projects. Now until the Logic Pro 10.5 update, the sampler instrument used to be known as the EXS24 sampler, which despite its fairly outdated visual interface, was both really easy to use and extremely robust in its ability to create multi-timbral virtual instruments, ranging from drum machines to Fairlight style keyboard sampler instruments. With the newest version of Logic, Apple has completely redone the visual layout of the sampler, giving it a fresh new look, but retaining all of the functionality of the original EXS24. So whenever I use the sampler for drum sounds, I like to set up what's called multi-output routing in the sampler instrument, which instead of having all the drum sounds playing through one stereo track in the mixer window, you can actually split them up into separate channels in the mixer, which makes it way easier to process the sounds individually uh, using various plugins and also allows you to send them to whatever output or bus you'd like for further processing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Logic Pro where we can look at a really simple way to get your drum sound set up for multi-output mixing. All right, so here we are in Logic. Um, I just have a little beat I've been working on recently. Nothing too crazy. Um, this is my uh, MIDI information for the drums down here. I'm using a 707 from uh, Samples from Mars, which makes really awesome uh, drum libraries based off of old drum machines, kits, that kind of thing. Um, so right now, it kind of sounds like this. So the uh, drums I programmed are now all obviously in one MIDI roll or piano roll right here. This is the region I have for the drums. And when we look at the sampler here, basically the only tabs we're gonna wanna be focusing on right now are just the mapping and the zone. Uh, they're also, you know, synth, mod matrix, modulators. We can just turn those off for now. Uh, we're just going to be wanting to looking, we're just going to want to basically look at the mapping for now. So as you can see right now, all the drum samples are basically funneled just through one stereo track. So when we play it, all the sounds are there, but it's only one track. You can only mix really the master volume of the entire kit. Um, but there's a way around it where you can actually split it up and create new aux tracks um, and choose which drum sounds are going through which channels. In order to do that, we will want to go up to where the instrument is, the sampler, going to click on this little section right here on the right side, go down to where your sampler is. Instead of stereo, we're actually gonna click multi-output and nothing will change. It'll just reload the uh, sampler instrument in the multi-output setting. And now you see this little plus and minus just popped up down here that wasn't there before. Um, and what that's gonna do is allow us to create new aux channels. As you can see, it says three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those are gonna be our separate channels for when we route the drum sounds. So let's go ahead and solo those. So let's have a little loop here. As you can see, they are still being routed through this, and that's because we haven't set up which channels we want the sounds to go through yet. So we can start with the kick. Uh, Samples from Mars actually, they have pre-made sample kits uh, that are actually already organized in groups such as like kick, snare, hi-hat, toms, that sort of thing. So if we go over to the kick category, um, I'm using C as the kick as it usually is. And what we're going to do uh, is go over to here and click on the Z. This is gonna be our zone uh, menu. 
And as you can see, zone one, C, that's our kick right there, the sample we're using. So if we scroll over and go to output, uh, there's gonna be group uh, and then main three, four. So these are actually gonna be your channel options. Uh, since we want the kick to primarily be on the first channel, let's go ahead and click main for that one. Nothing has changed so far, so let's go to the next one. Uh, the snare sound. If we look in our piano roll, our snare is on the E key, and there it is right there in the sampler window. And that's gonna be our second channel, if we go over back to the mixer window. So for E, that snare is going to be three, four. So now when we play it, suddenly our snare is appearing in the 3-4 track. So now we can just take it away by simply changing the volume of the fader. That also means that all the processing we've done on the original track does not apply to the new tracks. Uh, we'll look at that later. But um, for now, let's go ahead and start naming the tracks. First one is going to be kick, snare. Next up on the list, let's go ahead and do the hi-hat. Um, I'm actually going to group the hi-hat, the close, and open together. Uh, so we can kind of process that later as the same instrument, pretty much, or the same track. So we have the F sharp and G sharp. So in our category hi-hat, we're gonna go over here and put both of those on five, six, which is the next channel. Now we have the, just the hi-hat here. So let's call that hi-hat. We got some toms in there, so let's go ahead and tackle those. Uh, for the purpose, purposes of this, I'm just gonna throw actually let's do the clap let's do the clap next why not all right so the clap is where's that let's open that up so the clap is on e flat or d sharp there is our clap so let's go ahead and do seven eight play the tail end so you can hear where that clap is in the loop. There's our clap. Let's go ahead and call that. And since all that are left are the toms, let's go ahead and locate those. All right, so it's just those two. Let's go ahead and put them all on nine and ten. And if you want to, you can also put them on separate channels as well. So if we have the high tom, low tom, we can actually throw the high on 910. And for some reason, they have it set up so that the first uh, five uh, aux channels are stereo, then it goes into mono. For drums, it really doesn't matter too much um, since they are primarily going to be mono samples. So now we have everything completely separate. Uh, all of our drums are mapped out into different aux tracks. And if you want those to show up in the arrangement window, you can always right click, say create track, and there they are. So you can actually mute and solo them uh, in this window as well. And now we can start doing things like panning. We can go ahead and send these to our reverb channel or whatever uh, effects. Uh, 
bus you have set up. And since originally I had these plugins, the cassette by Waves Factory and the uh, Wolf Compressor by Good Hertz, just to give it a little character, make it sound a little lo-fi. Um, now I'm actually going to route all of these into a new bus. So if you click right here where it says stereo out, do select bus. Let's go ahead and do 10. And we'll go ahead and close that. So now everything, all the drums, are being funneled into this one bus right here. So to, in order to have all the processing of the original stereo track I had with all the drums, let's go ahead and drag those over to the newly created bus. Kind of bring that down a little bit. And now, I have all the original processing that I wanted uh, from the original stereo drum track. And of course, uh, the Samples from Mars kit I used is obviously very well um, organized beforehand. Um, if you're making your own, you're going to want to make sure your drum samples aren't too loud um, at their original volume. Um, so what I mean is, for example, this snare is hitting just a little high. Um, at Unity, it's hitting about negative 6.6. .6. If we want a little more headroom, if we're sending uh, any of these drum sounds to uh, compressors on your uh, uh, FX section here, um, we can actually go into the snare, find where the snare is, and we can drop that mixer volume within the sampler. Now we're heading at a more reasonable uh, peak around negative 12, negative 11. So that's pretty good. Um, so you can edit all of it within the sampler window and then have all the freedom and ease of adding effects, uh, changing volumes on the faders, panning, uh, anything you want. And last but not least, let's make sure you name your drum bus. And make it the same color if you want. Isn't that nice? Uh, so that's basically it. Um, next time you want to set up your drum samples in Logic and you need a really easy way to split your kit up into individual tracks when it's time to mix, uh, I promise this will speed up your workflow, make it much easier to add effects, pan, change volumes, whatever you want. And if this video helped you out, please feel free to click like and subscribe to my channel uh, for more production tips from Jake Thompson Audio. Thanks for watching.